My name's Willis, Dave Willis. In New Guinea, I preferred fighting the Japanese, but my bombardier had other ideas. We went round and round. Where it would end, neither one of us knew. to put their bombs on target, despite enemy flight and fighters. Like all machines, however, it depended on men, the crew of the plane that carried it. The story you are about to see concerns such a crew. It took place in New Guinea during the early days of the war. At that time, the Japanese held the port of Ley on the north coast. From bases near Port Moresby, on the south side of the Big Island, bombers took off daily to blast Japanese targets. Young veterans of these bombing missions were pilot Dave Willis and his co-pilot Phil Bohm. I'm looking for Lieutenant Willis. Where you found him? I just reported in. Rose, the name Jerry Rowe. I'm your new bombardier. Well, how are you? Phil Jerry Rowe, our replacement. Welcome to New Guinea. Peaceful native villages, excellent Japanese caretakers. Enjoy your stay. This our bird? Uh huh? Want to look her over? You bet. Now, this is yours. All yours. The guy I'm replacing. He's packed his bullet holes. Forget it. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sure you just got over the States. Well, things are different here. We haven't got time to be sorry. Today's mission begins a series of strikes against Japanese air bases. Our aim is to destroy enemy air power on the ground. The first base to be attacked is the fighter outpost east of Leahy. You have the coordinates. Are there any questions? Well, what are the chances of actually finding enemy aircraft on the ground? Excellent. Our mission is coordinated with a fighter sweep. Enemy planes will have just landed when we fly over. All you've got to do is hit them. Got that, Jerry? All you gotta do is hit them. He's okay. Well, he's too quiet for me. He's like he's always thinking of something else. Just the fact that he thinks at all be enough to make you suspicious. Sure, sure. Wonder what kind of technicians are turning out of bombardier school these days. We'll soon find out. Bombardier, we're coming in over target. Roger. Well, their planes are on the ground, all right. Pilot to Bombardier, she's all yours. Roger. you might like to see this bomb strike photo. <laughs> Bullseye. One, two, three, four, five planes knocked out. Now, your first mission. I wanted you to know how pleased I am. 
Drop them that way and these trips make sense. Thank you, Colonel. New boy makes good, huh? I got a feeling about this boy, Colonel. He'll be lead bombardier before you know it. <laughs> we flew 14 missions against Japanese air bases around Leahy. On all of them, Jerry performed like a precision machine. He accounted for a good percentage of Japanese air strength in the area. During this period, I got to know Jerry pretty well. I liked him. I couldn't foresee what was ahead for both of us. Smoke? Yeah, thanks. My father was killed down in this part of the world. For the war? No, a long time before that. I was just a kid. My mother told me about it. He was a missionary down in Borneo. One day he walked into the jungle and never came back. It's rough. He taught non-violence. He wouldn't approve of me being a bombardier. Matter of fact, I was almost a conscientious objector. What happened? Oh, I always liked flying. I had some half-baked ideas about flying transports, bringing wounded out, and stuff like that. So I flunked pilot training and was sent to bombardier school. I'll tell you, someone else who doesn't approve of your being a bombardier. Yeah, who's that? Japanese. The Japanese capacity for airstrikes has been temporarily knocked out. That's why we're shifting our attack to uh, this village. According to intelligence, the enemy has moved its main communications net into several of the native buildings and many of the other buildings are being used to house troops and supplies. Which building, sir? Uh, we don't know. That's why the village must be completely destroyed. What about any aircraft? It'll be heavy. You'll have to sneak in, unload in a hurry, and get out. Low altitude will be best. I have 0613. to Bombardier. Get set. We're going in. Roger. Okay, Jerry. Target coming up. She's all yours, Jerry. Boy, so we can get out of here. This flak's beginning to look like an overcast. What if he dropped those bombs? Sure. I 
thought old Boehm would clip his lid when you didn't drop those bonds. Oh, you have uh, trouble with the bomb site or something? The bomb site was perfect. And a very clear picture of the target. It was a church. A native church. After that, Jerry spent a lot of time by himself. On the missions, he seemed to be brooding. He did his job all right, but uh, not as well as before. This wasn't the same guy who'd become my friend. Hi, boys. Hey, what do you say, Tim? Sit down. Well, my boys got their fifth zero today. Well, what do you want? Your crew's been out here longer than anyone else. Went slam bang into one of the native villages. Oh. A plane falling among those buildings must have killed some natives. Don't worry about those natives. They know how to take care of themselves. How do you figure? They live all their lives with nothing but coconuts falling from the skies, and all of a sudden it's raining bombs and zeros. Well, this one didn't hurt anybody. How do you know? Well, the church. They figured there's one place they'll always be safe, so if there's any air action nearby, they always head right for the church. You're lying. <laughs> Wait a minute. You're lying! Church, you idiot! Clear off! See you later. Is he always like that? The last couple of weeks. A guy like that in your outfit could cause plenty of trouble. Oh, uh, he'll be okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. Just tired. Yeah. Thank you. Sam? Yes, sir? Samuel, what, what village are you from? It's the village of Manitou, in the mountains. Were you ever bombed? Yes, sir. You ran into the jungle, didn't you? Oh, no, sir. No time. Everybody in the village, man, woman, child, all hide in the church. Why? Safe in church. No one hurt us there. The Japanese attacked Chongqing again today, concentrating on an area crowded with refugees. Several thousands were massacred with anti-personnel bombs. We're no better, are we, Sam? Pardon, sir? I said we're no better. Church. We we can't sit church, we can't bomb it. Push back around Lay, and once more the pattern of our attacks changed. We were after ammunition ships trying to sneak through with supplies. Pilot to Bombardier, nip at one o'clock. Roger. Well, that was a short, sweet run. Take her home. Yeah, man. ships more than I do native villages. Well, look, we can't pick out our own targets. Why don't you go back to flying the airplane? Because you're part of that airplane. My job is to push that button. What I think is my own business. Well, forget I'm your aircraft commander. Uh, I'm talking to you as a friend. Intelligence picks out our targets. Now, this is a big war. They can't explain every one of them to us. But you, you've got to have confidence in the guys upstairs here. You'll you know, crack wide open. I don't have any confidence, Dave. Now leave me alone. Uh, Tiger, 
target for today is the last Japanese airstrip in the Leyte vicinity. Destruction of this strip will make the work of our ground forces infinitely easier. Now, each of your aircraft has its own target. Lieutenant Willis? Yes, sir. Your ship will hit the warehouse on the north side of the runway. Yes, sir. Captain Weller, your aircraft... Reception committee, zeros. The last airstrip, they mean to fight for it. What do you want? Oh, you just walk away from a plane. You think that's all there is to it, huh? What do you want me to do? Pin a medal on you for blowing up a hospital? Now you almost got us all killed. Why don't you court-martial me? <sighs> Rather knock some sense into you. Well, now, why don't you just try? Now, look, Jerry, I... Oh, I'm tired of listening to you. <laughs> Lieutenant? Yes, sir. I heard about the fight, Willis. Well, it's just one of those things, sir. I spoke to Lieutenant Baum. I know why it happened. You don't have to protect Jerry Rowe any longer. Well, sir, I... Lieutenant Baum tells me that this uh, thing with Rowe has been going on for two weeks or more. That's right, sir. Well, why didn't you report it then? I've always handled my crew's morale. I still think I can straighten him out, sir. He almost got you all killed today. That's a pretty big risk to take while you're straightening him out. He's too good a bombardier, sir. Potentially the best. That was the uh, bombing of that church. Well, if you look at it from another angle, sir, uh, his reaction proves one thing. He's a pretty decent man. He isn't the kind of man I'd like to toss aside like scrap. Ah, uh, we need good bombardiers, you know that, if there's some sensible way out. But we can't run the risk of losing aircraft or other crew members. Colonel, uh, maybe if you got away for a little bit. You know, a little rest. I know. Thank you, sir. But we 
weeks passed quickly after Jerry left us. We were softening up the area north of Ley for the ground forces. That was in early September. As you can see, he's requested a transfer. Yes, sir. Under the circumstances, I don't see why I shouldn't approve it. Except for one thing, sir. Now, you wouldn't ask anybody else to fly in a plane that didn't check out. Nobody would, sir. No, of course not. Well, that's what giving Roe a transfer would amount to. Instead of curing the trouble, we'd just be passing it along to somebody else. But... Hello, Colonel Alder. Right. And thanks. We've taken Lee. Oh, great, sir. Now we're pushing him back, finally. Well, what'll we do with Roe? Can you stall that for a few days, sir? Yes, why? Well, with your permission, I'd like to get Roe and bring him back. Well, now that we've taken Lee, he can take a look at that little village and the church. It might answer something for him one way or the other. I'm going there myself. All right, Lieutenant, I'll have your orders drawn up. Thank you, sir. By next morning, I was in Sydney. I knew where Jerry was, and in a couple of hours, I'd looked him up. I've had a lot of time down here to think things over. I want to start clean. Somewhere else. Well, the guys want you back, Jerry. Mm, that's nice to know. But it's better this way. I'll transfer. You owe it to yourself to come back with me. Now, I, I'm not talking about uh, staying with the crew. If you want to transfer, you probably get it, but... Uh... Well, now that Lay's opened up, you've got to go into that village. Look at that church. What's a lot of rubble gonna tell me? There might still be somebody around there who could answer some questions. No. I've got a clearance to land at Lay. Well, what do you say? Okay. Sure. Good. We flew up towards Ley, the same route over which we'd done so much fighting. Now it was peaceful. I called ahead and got my landing instructions. Uh, Lieutenant Willis, Lieutenant Rowe. Colonel. I was in operations when your flight plan came through. Mary's been standing by since yesterday. Uh, Mary Adams, this is Lieutenant Willis, and this is the other lieutenant I told you about, Lieutenant Rowe. I'm very honored to meet you. Likewise. I met Mary at an intelligence interrogation. We were trying to assess the effectiveness of our airstrikes. She was a missionary teacher in the village of Bonnie Popo. That was the village in which you uh, bombed the church, Lieutenant Rowe. I, I see. The children of Bonnie Popo made this for you. The children? Why? The Japanese used the church as a radio center. They used it also to question my people about your soldiers. They beat them. It was no longer a church to us. What about the people inside? Only Japanese. The Americans warned us. All my people were in the hills, safe. Please accept this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I was way out of line. The brass knew just what they were doing. I'll be back in a moment to tell you more about Lieutenants Willis and Rowe. And Lieutenant Rowe finished the war together. They each earned many decorations but they always considered the plated cross as the most valuable, a symbol of human drama in the story of flight.